Red alert, red alert, raise the alarm. The Zuck is trying to cuck Firefox. We've got to get our torches, we've got to get our pitchforks, and, and hide the penguins in the freezer. They don't need to see this bloody, gory battle that is about to take place. That pretty much sums up the reactions that I've seen most people having to this news that Mozilla and Meta, formerly Facebook, are now working together or having a partnership, as this title seems to imply, which is not what's actually going on. We'll uh, get into what's really going on. And I also hear some people saying that this is going to be horrible for privacy and the Linux community, since of course, Firefox is pretty much the default browser on most GNU Linux distros. So this news was actually announced in a blog post on Mozilla's website a few days ago, and it is titled, Privacy Preserving Attribution for Advertising. So it reads, advertising provides critical support for the web. We've been looking to apply privacy preserving advertising technology to the attribution problem so that advertisers can get answers to important questions without harming privacy. So yeah, ads provide support for the web and by support, I mean money. Pretty much all of the content on the internet costs money to produce, websites especially, because when you think about it, you gotta pay for a domain, you have to pay for hosting, and even if you self-host, you still have to pay for your internet connection, obviously, and then when your website gets popular enough or if somebody just decides to mess with you, then you're going to have to either pay for or create your own DDoS protection. Uh, so to cover all of these costs, and again, this is also assuming that you know how to do web development. If you don't, then you're probably going to have to pay a developer for that too, or you're going to have to just go through one of these build your own website services that usually just bundle all this stuff to together. But the point is that it's going to cost you some money. And so oftentimes what people will do to make their websites profitable or to just recoup the cost of building it is that they will run ads on the website. And even content creators on sites like YouTube, a lot of the time that content costs money to produce. Now I do know a lot of content creators, they basically just read and then react to Reddit posts or TikToks these days. Uh, but a lot of them still end up paying editors to edit their videos and probably people to create thumbnails for them as well. Uh, and then obviously you have some people like Mr. Beast who make videos that have a very high I guess at least cost of production, uh, costs a lot of money to produce even before he gives away a cash prize. And so for a lot of those creators, ads are really gonna be their only revenue stream. Sure, you can do Patreon donations, or you could sell merch, or you could even have other businesses of yours that you promote on your social media, and then maybe you choose to not run any ads at all, but generally, those kinds of revenue streams, they only work for much larger creators that already have an established fan base. So ads, they allow the modern web to work and they allow content, whether that be news articles, YouTube videos, or content that's on other platforms to be free. And without ads, we would probably have something more like a pay-per-view or possibly a pay-per-service model for websites and social media content, which nobody wants. Now, I don't personally consider ads themselves to be that bad, especially when they're non-intrusive ads. But the spooky thing about ads on the internet is the tracking that goes into them, the technology that is involved with targeted advertising. So you've probably seen something like this before where you look at a product on Amazon or Best Buy and now all of a sudden you're seeing ads for that same product everywhere you go on the internet. And that's because of this targeted advertising which also incentivizes websites that run ads and even the web browsers themselves to try and spy on users' activity, and the really weird thing about it is that they are trying to create sort of a type of avatar of the user. Sometimes I compare it to like a voodoo doll where they're trying to figure out what all of your interests are and basically who you are as a person based off of the content that you view on the internet, which is really creepy to me. So the tracking is really what I don't like. The ads themselves, not that big of a deal to me. So what Firefox is working on with Meta right now, which right now is really just a proposal. Okay, there's no actual changes yet. Like I know that some people are saying that uh, this is like a partnership 
that they're doing with Facebook. And no, that's not really what's going on here. In fact, why don't I just read the blog post to you so that you know what's going on. So for the last few months, we've been working with a team from Meta, formerly Facebook, on a new proposal that aims to enable conversion measurements or attribution for advertising called Interoperable Private Attribution or IPA. IPA aims to provide advertisers with the ability to perform attribution while providing strong privacy guarantees. IPA has two key privacy preserving features. First, it uses multi-party computation, MPC, to avoid allowing any single entity, websites, browser makers, or advertisers to learn about user behavior. Mozilla has some experience with MPC systems as we've deployed Prio for privacy preserving telemetry. Second, it is an aggregated system, which means that it produces results that cannot be linked to individual users. Together, these features mean that IPA cannot be used to track or profile users. IPA is designed to provide a lot of flexibility for advertising businesses in terms of how they use the system. Cross-device and cross-browser attribution options in IPA enable new and more robust attribution capabilities while maintaining privacy. The IPA proposal aims to ensure that all sites benefit from these features with the match key concept, which allows smaller players to access the greater reach of entities to cross-device attribution. Together with our co-authors from Meta, we've re recently proposed IPA to the Private Advertising Technology Community Group, or PATCG, which is a group in the W3C specifically formed to work on improving advertising without compromising on privacy. So yeah, this is really not something that I think is worth getting bent out of shape over, at least not now, because Again, it's literally a proposal. No code has been changed to Firefox yet. And even when it does get changed and if the implementation of it does suck, it can always be removed. That's the beautiful thing about free software. If you don't like one thing, no matter how small it is, you could just fork the software. There's already several forks of Firefox, so you could create another one and call it unzucked Firefox. And who knows, maybe I'll even review it one day on this channel. Uh, or this might even be something that you can just disable within vanilla Firefox, just like this privacy preserving telemetry that they talk about. So in my Firefox profile, I have telemetry disabled completely. I don't want to have any telemetry within my browser, no matter how much it says it will preserve my privacy. And this is something that you can do as well. There's even automated scripts these days that will automatically go through the best browser settings to essentially harden Firefox to make it have as much privacy as it possibly can. And I know that some people are still going to want to avoid something with Facebook or Meta's name attached to it, no matter what. And I can totally understand that, but you should probably know that companies like Facebook and Google, they create a lot of things that are pretty useful. In fact, you might even be using some of them yourself and not even know it. Uh, without them being spooky, as long as they're free and open source and they're not being used to manipulate you in any way. I don't really care who is producing it. I mean, for one, Google is literally one of the biggest funders of Firefox right now, and they have been for a while. So if Google's involvement with Firefox, if that wasn't enough to make you leave it, then I wouldn't really think that Facebook getting involved now would be that much different because I think Facebook is just about as evil as Google is. Maybe a little bit more evil than Google. Uh, but yeah, you can put down your pitchforks. You can take your penguin out of the secret hidden freezer. Everything's fine, at least for now. Like and comment to hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your day.